Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Line Time, Wednesday afternoon, March 25th. It's warming up out there a little bit. Uh, that's awesome. I got a text message from a friend of mine saying the golf courses are going to open. I'm not sure what that means. I don't want to get my hopes up, but uh, pretty interesting there. I uh, hope you're enjoying the day, everybody, so far. Really enjoyed our Zoom meetings today. If we take a look at our schedule, we I crossed out everything. Uh, actually, I should have crossed out lunch. I did have lunch. Uh, and then we've got afternoon line time here today. So uh, announcements. Uh, Mr. Matt and I will be building out our Google Classroom over spring break uh, so the students can turn in work more efficiently. We're going to try and get more organized. Right now, everybody's turning in works on that introductory page. Uh, we're going to try to get more complicated and sophisticated and try to make it so that we've got different places to turn in your work. Thank you to the parents who have been giving the advice on this. Uh, so yeah, we're going to hopefully be building out Google Classroom over spring break, getting a little more familiar with it uh, while everyone is away. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences. So for those of you with parent-teacher conferences tomorrow, uh, I will be emailing password-protected PDFs with instructions. Uh, so those are for the people who have parent-teacher conferences tomorrow. And then for those on Friday, we'll be doing those. I'll be emailing out those out Thursday night. And the same thing for those on Sunday, so we can get those out hopefully on Saturday night or maybe even Friday night. We'll see. So we are going to be doing a new schedule after spring break. I did not post this yet, but we are turning the third graders over to uh, lower elementary with Miss Debbie and Mr. Sam. Uh, of course, like I said, they're always welcome to join us at our live streams. They are always welcome to go to the YouTube channel for any presentations they want to look at. So third graders, you are always, always welcome. I really have enjoyed our time with you. It's been fabulous. So uh, the new schedule is going to look like this. I'll get more detail about this. I was going to write it on the board, but now I have a tradition of crossing out stuff, so I didn't do that. So fifth, uh, fourth graders and fifth graders, you'll stay in the same places. Sixth graders, you guys will be bumped to 11.15 to 11.40. And then we're looking at seventh and eighth graders between one and 125, giving everybody some time to have lunch and everything. So I also would like to move afternoon line time to 2.30, give a little time to prepare for afternoon line time for Mr. Matt and for myself. So let's see here. I want to share some student work that's been coming in. Uh, I've been using afternoon line time to do that. So here I go. I've got something from an eighth grade boy on the virus, the follow-up. He says, the capsid is the protective protein shell of a virus. It is made up of many subunits called capsomeres. The capsid protects the genetic material of the virus. The genetic, the genetic material is DNA and RNA. The classification of the capsid relies on its shape. Most viruses have a helical or icosahedral, icosahedral shape. Uh, and I looked this up. I, Icosahedral means 20-sided, and it's come from the Greek for 20 icosoi and cetadra. So in, this, in the helical structure, the genetic material forms a spiral going up. The capsomeres make springs around gen genetic material. I don't know if that's a typo or not. Some viruses called bacteriophages have a prolate structure. Prolate structures are elongated versions of an icosahedral capsid. Each one of the capsid faces has one... Uh, or more capsomeres. An example of this is the foot and mouth disease virus, which has three capsomeres on each face of its capsid. And this continues on. Excellent work, eighth grader. Thank you for getting that to us. I learned a lot by reading it, and I appreciate your work. Here is a fourth grade boy reporting on cytoplasm, something I'm very interested in. Cytoplasm is one of the three main parts of the cell. Cytoplasm is mostly made of water and has some solids. The main job of cytoplasm is to keep the cell alive. The cell's organelles are contained in the cytoplasm. One kind of organelle makes protein and another makes energy from food for the cell's growth. Awesome, thank you for that research, fourth grade boy. That was awesome. Here's another fourth grade boy doing uh, the Golgi apparatus and he even gave me a nice little drawing here. The Golgi apparatus, also known as the Golgi complex or Golgi body, is a membrane-bound organelle and is found in eukaryotic cells. The Golgi apparatus is responsible for transporting, modifying, and packaging proteins and it's, I think that's lipids into vesicles for delivery to targeted destinations. In general, the Golgi apparatus is made up of about four to eight cisternae. Interesting. That sounds like a Latin root that 
you should look up there, fourth grader, so you can inform me. I love it. I've got an eighth grader, another eighth grade boy, doing capstone work on Dungeons and Dragons, and he sent a capstone um, preview for us, and I've got a little history. The first slide says the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons, the role-playing game, was published in 1974. The creators were Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, and it was based off of Gygax's war game, Chainmail. And it is said to be the first TTRPG, which is tabletop role-playing game. So eighth grader, thank you for that work. We know you're working on very hard on your capstone there. Great job. I've got a fifth grader who sent in a similar shapes follow-up work, and he's got diamonds, he's got a big one and a little one, he's got a right triangle, big one and a little one, rectangle, big and little, square, big and little, circle, big and little, and it looks like he's giving me some definitions here, and I can't quite read that, but that's okay. Great job, fifth grader. I love the use of construction paper. Uh, anytime we're using our hands to get a work done like that, kids, it's amazing work. You're going to learn more the more senses that you engage. So I'm hoping to see more similar shape follow-ups like this one. Great job, fifth grader. Uh, here's a fifth grade girl on the digestive system. Uh, she focused on the liver. So the liver is a large organ that is on the right side of your stomach. The liver removes chemicals and breaks down drugs in your body. Its most important job is to purify the blood coming from the digestive tract before giving it to the rest of the body. The liver has two parts called the right and left lobes. The gallbladder and pancreas are under the liver, and these organs work together to digest, absorb, and process food. The liver also produces bile. Bile holds bile acids, which are criti critical for digestion and absorbing fats. The liver makes glucose and it turns glycogen into glucose. This process is called glycogen and it stops there and I looked this up. I think you meant to say glycano, glycogenolysis. I think that's the term there. Please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> glycano, glycogenolysis. The liver also breaks down protein into amino acids. The liver also makes clotting factors for your blood. When you have a cut and it starts bleeding, clotting factors are what tells it to stop. Very good, I, it seems like you learned a lot there. Fifth grade girl, awesome job on your work on the liver. I've got another fourth grade boy doing work on the animal cell. Now this is exactly why kids are the best ones to learn about this. So the cell membrane, and this is fourth grade boy on the cell membrane, the cell membrane holds the cell together. It is like the gate of a castle. It lets certain things in, but not doesn't let others. The cell membrane is the main unit of organization in biology. The cell membrane is not a solid structure. It is made out of millions of smaller molecules that something a flexible container that coat a flexible container. He's got a little drawing here. <laughs> Great job, fourth grader. I love it. Uh, we've got an eighth grader who decided to uh, parse the quote from Eleanor Roosevelt today. So yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. So because we're going to go on spring break, I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and give this one to you. So the eighth grader gave us yesterday, in this case, as a noun. Technically, um, it might be considered an abstract noun, but we're going to know roll with noun. Is you did give me auxiliary verbs instead of linking verbs. I think that was your one mistake here. All of your verbs here have the white circle, which re represents an auxiliary verb. Would, can, could, might, may. We're looking for the verb symbol with the white triangle in the middle for linking verbs. I think you know that. So noun, linking verb, noun, noun, linking verb. So tomorrow is A is an article, mystery is a noun, today noun, is linking verb, A article, gift, noun. Now this is where we get a little bit dicey. This is where grammar gets fun. You've got that. That as is separated into that is, that is a demonstrative pronoun. You got that correct. And is, of course, is another linking verb. And then we have why. And I did some extra research on this, and I am not sure. But let's go and say the sentence without the word why in it and see if we can figure out what why is doing here. So the sentence itself is, that's why we call it the present. Okay. What if we take out why? That's, we call it the present. 
So thinking about it this way, I was thinking, well, why is usually an interrogative adverb, but in this case, it might be acting like a pronoun. I'm leaning toward it being a pronoun here as it is standing in for the entire thought about today as a gift, especially since this sentence here is, is hearkening back to today is a gift. That is my guess. I may be right. I may be wrong. But that's the great thing about uh, advanced grammar. Sometimes we can have arguments about this. But I love the fact, eighth grader, that you attempted this. And uh, you did a great job overall. Just remember, these are linking verbs, not auxiliary verbs. All right, I've got a third grade girl reporting on parts of an animal cell. The Golgi apparatus, very popular. And the Golgi apparatus is an organelle. It's like your cell's mailman. Very interesting. When a protein enters, it gets changed. Then it gets put in vesicles. But not just that, it also makes lysosomes. In the cytoplasm of a cell, the Golgi apparatus just floats there doing its job. <laughs> Are you wondering why it's called the Golgi apparatus? Because the person who discovered it was named Camilo Golgi. If you saw one, it might look like a stack of pancakes. And she went ahead and drawed the Golgi apparatus. She drew the, drawed, <laughs> drew the Golgi apparatus here with blue and orange and uh, also a stack of pancakes with butter. I deeply appreciate that as a lover of pancakes myself. I think that's fabulous. So thank you for sharing your student work there. I love that. Great job. So that is some student work. And we are really, really proud of all of you for continuing to keep up your work ethic from home. We know that sometimes we don't identify certain places with things, but uh, apparently we are taking advantage of all the hints and tips that uh, your parents and teachers are giving you about finding a place to do your work that is different than where you do your play. That is awesome. Very good kids, keep up the excellent work. And like I said, Matt and I are going to be working on Google Classroom to make it a more efficient way to organize your work into different sections so we don't have everything just posted on that front page. So thank you for that. All right, so let's talk about answers to riddles. Um, let's see here. So we've got the one that was given to me by a parent. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Well, because we're about to go on spring break, I think I'll just go ahead and tell you. It's because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you so much. And we've got another one here. This one, I, I'm going to keep accepting answers. This one is so good. People, Some people are getting it. Some people aren't. I'm going to repeat it. Someone's mother has four sons. Three of the sons are named North, South, East, and West. What is the fourth son's name? <laughs> so... Uh, we will see if anybody can answer that one. Uh, that is the one that the least number of people have actually solved. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh yes, the kettlebell. The kettlebell, 32 kilograms. If you said somewhere right around 70.54 pounds, you are correct. The conversion rate is about one kilogram for every 2.2 pounds. So that is awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, Americans, we stick to an old system, but we definitely need to know about kilograms, centimeters, meters, kilometers, etc. That's the great thing about Pokemon Go. I'm pretty, pretty sure I know how long a kilometer is now because I've been playing that game for so long. All right, let's see here. I have a new riddle from a student that I'd like to share. This student sent me an email and he essentially solved all of the riddles, but I'm gonna read this to you. And maybe I'll post it on the Google Classroom. This one is pretty complex. I don't even know where to start. So here we go. You are driving a bus with 12 people on it, moving at 65 miles per hour. At every stop, it slows down for five seconds and stays stopped for three seconds per person getting off or on. It takes seven seconds to get back to top speed. At the first stop, five people get off and two people get on. At the second stop, three people get off and 10 people get on. At the third stop, one person gets off and nobody gets on. How old is the bus driver? <laughs> I have no idea. And the best part about this, kids, is that the sixth grader wrote, I won't tell you the answer to this one. You have to figure it out yourself. How Montessori of you. Thank you. Or no thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I hopefully will post this on Google Classroom maybe later, maybe tomorrow. This one is tough. I don't even know if this is truly a math riddle. I don't know if this is a language riddle. This one is pretty tough. So there we go. Let's see here. Oh, yes. Um, let's go to interactive time for a minute here. 
<laughs> a parent is asking, is the car you held up at the beginning a 1969 Mustang? Really cool build. Love that. Put the supercharger on it. Hey, son, is this a 67 Mustang? Yes, it's a 67 Mustang GT. Yes, it's a 67 Mustang GT. Uh, he knows. I don't. But, yeah, there you have it straight from the horse's mouth. He built that. Not me. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, son. Appreciate it. Okay, good. Let's move on. Ah, will you do line times on spring break? A uh, question from a sixth grader. No, we will not be doing line times on spring break uh, for a very important reason. One, we need to spend our time. Well, teachers also need to rest and reflect and take some time to gather ourselves. But the other reason is that when we are going to be doing work, when I plan to do work, I plan to be posting YouTube videos, uh, presentations. So my time preparing for line times will be spent working on presentations for you as we move forward. We don't know how long this uh, online situation is going to last, but like I said, we are preparing for this to last as long as the rest of the school year. This, that may or may not be the case, who knows? But that's what we're going to do. So there will be no line times over spring break. Expect to see us back on Monday, April 6th. Okay, let's see. Oh, <laughs> I have a seventh grader who literally just solved this uh, this riddle. I don't know if it's the actual solution. Oh my lord! I think she's right. Ah, <laughs> I should have seen that. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, kid. Um, I think you are right. Um, oh, I got a fifth grader who got the same thing. How come I, uh, this is why kids' brains are just so good. They're like sponges. They're, they, they're soaking up information. They're doing stuff. Um, excellent, excellent work. Um, let's see here. I got a fourth grader saying is the answer some. That is not the case. Let's see here. All right, moving on here. Ah, I've got a follow-up, and this sixth grader is saying, uh, this cap, the capstan is in the shape of a spring. It isn't a typo. So there you go. Thank you. And no, sixth grader, this was not yours. This was another student's, but thank you for giving me that information. Appreciate that. And I got a, a third grader who got the riddle as well. I am really starting to feel my age at this point. Wow. All right. Checking the text messages. Oh, I've got a student who made a model of a virus. That is awesome. Let me point that out for you. The virus right there. Nice work, seventh grader. Love that. Great job. Let's move on to... <laughs> Let's see. All right, I've got another riddle for you. We'll see. This is from a sixth grader in honor of J.R.R. Tolkien. And today is National J.R.R. Tolkien Retolkien Day. So an eye in a blue face saw an eye in a green face. That is like to this eye, said the first eye, but in low place, not in high place. And this is a riddle from The Hobbit. So an eye in a blue face saw an eye in a green face. That is like to this eye, said the first eye but in low place, not in high place. I do not know what this one's going to be. I didn't get the one that everybody is te basically telling me all the answers to right now. So yeah, that riddle, hopefully you guys will get that one. I've got, yeah, I've got more responses coming in. Ooh, yeah. I also have another story I'd like to share. This was one of our Story Cube stories that I just came in. And this was using the smiley face, the sea turtle, and the pyramid. So once upon a time, a sea turtle with a smiley face was swimming in the southeastern Mediterranean Sea. The turtle swam so far that he ended up in Cairo, Egypt. He was so tired, he was so tired, so he crawled out of the water onto the hot sand. He wanted to find a place to sleep and saw many options. One option was a hotel. Another option was the Great Pyramid of Giza. The pyramid looked so big and would take way too much energy to climb all the way up. So he decided to check into the hotel. He had the best sleep ever. 
I agree with this turtle. I would definitely go to the hotel. I would just make sure it had a nice swimming pool. You know what I'm saying? Very nice. Love it. Um, yep, there we go. And we got an eighth grader who, is, yeah, yeah, thank you. But uh, I don't know if this one's fair because you know this uh, sixth grader fairly well, eighth grader. So I'm not sure how you got this answer. All I know is that everybody's getting this answer except for me. And that's fine. So let's check the emails again. I got someone saying the fourth son's name is Jimmy in the riddle. That's right. So someone's mother has four sons. Three of the sons are named North, South, uh, North, South, and East. What is the fourth son's name? Oh, definitely not Jimmy. Definitely not Jimmy. Sorry about that. All right. So I do think we've had enough time for that one. So let me read it one more time and then give you the solution. Someone's mother has, actually, let me go to the original. I wrote it down wrong. Someone's mother has four sons. Three of the sons are named North, South, and East. What is the fourth son's name? And the answer is someone. <laughs> Groan. I can hear you all the way across the interwebs. I hear you groaning, kids. That's right. Someone. Why? Listen to the riddle. Someone's mother has four sons. Three of the sons are named North, South, and East. What is the fourth son's name? And of course, you're thrown off by North, South, and East. You want to say West. Of course, that's what you want to say. But that is incorrect. So thank you for that. <laughs> I just got a seventh grader texting in at the very last second, trying to get credit. Middle schooler, I'm not so sure I'm going to give you credit for that. Middle schooler literally just came in. The second I answer this, I'm not sure. We don't know exactly if you got that or not, but you are correct. It is someone. Very nice. So going back to what we need to do to prepare for after spring break, just to review. For those of you who may be joining us late, I'll go back to the announcements quickly. Matt and I are going to be building out our Google Classroom uh, to make it more efficient and a better form for turning in work. So we can have different places for kids to turn in work. We're gonna work on exploring that and figuring that out. Parent-teacher conferences, those of you that have a conference tomorrow, uh, expect an email with a, a password-protected PDF this evening so that we can be prepared to talk about it. I will add this, and I forgot to mention it, and I've got it big here. We are gonna be trying to do these over Zoom, and I love the fact that we worked with Zoom earlier this week with the kids so we know we have uh, a lot of people we can get in contact with if for some reason you don't have zoom or don't uh don't have access to zoom or for some reason you can't use it guess what you can always give me a call and if you need my number just email me and i will get that to you we can try facetime whatsapp etc uh, but we're going to try zoom for our parent-teacher conferences, if that's going to work. I will say this, parents, we're probably going to have to limit conferences to about 25 minutes because there will be that time that I will need to get the next parent on board with Zoom so we can end a meeting and then begin another meeting as we move forward. So please work with us when it comes to this. This will be the first time we ever try this with parent-teacher conferences, but we have had some success this week. We are learning all about how Zoom works. We are learning... Uh, how to make it a better experience for both ourselves and the kids. And uh, I'm really thankful that we've had this learning experience. So this is very good. So thank you for that. Let's see here. Any more coming in? More emails in. Ah, the answer to the Hobbit riddle is, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it, the sun. All right, so let me go back to the riddle and read it. An eye in blue face saw an eye in, in an eye in a blue face saw an eye in a green face. That is like to this eye, said the first eye, but in low place, not in high place. Uh, eighth grader who answered that, I would love it if you could get back to me with the the reason why it's the sun, because I have no idea. I'm not going to pretend that I know what this means. So thank you for that. All right. So uh, I do have one more piece of business I'd like to attend to. As a classroom community, we are saying goodbye to one of our fifth graders who's been a very valued member of our community. I've known this boy for a long time since he was in third grade with us. Um, this kid is a great builder. He loves to build just about anything. You want something built, he can build it for you. 
Lego, straws, popsicle sticks, it doesn't matter. He can do it. Um, I have loved seeing all of your work. I have loved all the time you've spent with us as a community and all the time you've spent learning Latin with me. Um, we wish you the best of luck in the future. We want you to visit us at every conceivable opportunity. And we're going to miss you and your family very much. So thank you. Um, but I do have to give that shout out um, in honor of our, our departing student. Um, you've been a great part of this community with your, with your family. So thank you for all the memories. And I will, uh, I will look forward to seeing you visit. And, and I just wanted to get that out there. So with that, I'm going to go back one more time to this riddle answer thing. If this eighth grader is going to get back to me. And she is not getting back to me. So that is what it is. But um, anyway, folks, I am going to end line time today. Like I said, fifth grader, uh, we wish you the best. Uh, actually, yeah, we wish you the best. And we um, will miss you as a community. Uh, I believe our classroom is, is a family. And we are a community that works together. And uh, even people who have left our community, I still want to stay connected with them. And I've been very fortunate over the years to, to maintain connections with many former students over the years. And uh, it's just a real, it's just a real blessing in my life. I'm very fortunate to have that as a teacher. It's one of the great perks of being an educator is just all of the, it's, it just expands out with all the, the people that you connect with. So everybody, on behalf of Mr. Matt, on behalf of the rest of us at school, we want to wish you a safe and happy and healthy spring break. We want you to have fun. We will see you for line time on April 6th. For those of you that guessed 12 on the number of sports items, you were correct. And uh, yeah. Parents, we'll be talking to you over this weekend. We love parent-teacher conferences, love talking about the kids and the progress we've made. Have a great day, folks. Go out, enjoy the day. I think it's in the 50s right now. We'll see you later. Bye.